Hello everybody, welcome to Up Close and Personal. As you know, it's a show put together by the NBC to celebrate our local and international stars. Today, live in the studio, we got Mrs. Varushka Pater telling us about her talent. Now, she's a distinguished Indo-African designer and also a classical dancer. But, as you know, we kick off the show straight away with some entertainment. They were here recently in Mauritius for the Sam Yuljana concert. And today we welcome Mr. Vijay Siwalala, Mr. Manish Ramjatan, and Nishal Bojawan, also Vadish Dusoy. Let's enjoy this entertainment.
What an amazing opening performance, uh, Kanya Group by Kanya Events, live in the studio. Let me remind you again, uh, all the musicians that we've seen today, Mr. Vijay Siwalol from South Africa on the flute, Manish Ramjitan from South Africa on Santor, Nishal Bojawan from Mauritius on tabla, and of course we saw on keyboard Vadish Dusoy. I was telling you before, we've got an amazing uh, a, a person right here in the studio, talented person in the studio, uh, fashion designer, dancer, she's going to tell us. Uh, we're going to get up close and personal with Mrs. Pate. How are you? Good morning, Jerry. Thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> now, let me tell you a little bit. I shall go in details a bit later on. Now, Varishka Pate blends her Indian and African heritage to create uh, the most stunning uh, garments. Uh, Mrs. Pate has uh, taken her love for Indian and African uh, culture and blended the two to create uh, the most uh, beautiful designs. Uh, when we hear Indian uh, uh, African uh, designs, it's all the beautiful patterns and Indian design, of course, the most glamorous. Uh, uh, material that you can find around the world. Now, we since I have you, I, I do uh, thank you. What a privilege to have you. I know you're very, very busy when you come to Mauritius. Uh, you've taken time uh, to come and visit us. Uh, now, I want everybody to know, I've read about uh, your career, very, very impressed, uh, to tell us how you got started in uh, uh, the entertainment industry. So, I come from a very traditional family in South Africa, Port Elizabeth. Um, and from that, I've always loved dance. Um, and when I was a young girl, I would travel around the city and the country performing with my local dance school. And when I was 17, I decided to move to India. So I've lived in India for many years, learning the classical art of Bharat Natyam from my esteemed gurus, the Dhananjayans, um, and returned to South Africa in 2002 and lived as an artist, traveled, performed, and started teaching the sadhana of dance. And thereafter, started traveling the world, performing my art, and sharing this great legacy of Bharat with so many other countries. So what inspired you to get into, like, let's talk about dancing first. Uh, what inspired you to get into dance? Uh, I think it was, initially it starts, everyone loves the glitz and the glamour, the costumes, the jewellery, <laughs> the movement, the music. Um, and later on when I actually started uh, imbibing the culture and the ritual of, of the movement, this holistic movement of dance, I realized it was a resonance uh, way beyond just movement. It was almost aligning itself with the universe. So then I realized that this was a very powerful uh, medium to share intense energy, uh, ancestral stories, scriptural stories, um, and not just give people an, a visual experience of movement, but a very innate experience of powerful energy. South Africa, Port Elizabeth is very beautiful, by the way. We say hello to everybody watching <laughs> us. And uh, the difference in culture, when you left uh, South Africa at the age of 17, you went to India. How was that transition? It was my first international flight out of the country. And uh, a young, innocent um, girl from a, a, a multicultural community of Port Elizabeth, I landed in a very orthodox, traditional home and country and city of Chennai, India. I lived with my gurus, so I lived and imbibed that tradition of Guru Sishya Parampara. So it was very new to me, but uh, it was a beautiful culture that almost uh, became one with me because there was no separation or no difference. Uh, I learned what was actually within me. So uh, it was wonderful. And with that, everything I've learned there, I've brought into my hometown, into other countries that I've learned, uh, lived and so many other students that I've taught. So I've so shared it was, that. It was a huge difference in culture. Very big. adapted uh, quite uh, quick, quite well. I adapted quite quickly because um, I was actually the one most traditional girl in my class. I think the language is always a problem, but I learned my gurus are Malayalam. So I learned a bit of uh, Tamil and Malayali and um, adapted with my friends. So is that where you also perfected your dance uh, talent? Yeah. Uh, I really 
could learn and experience the nuance of dance in Chennai. Yeah. We will talk about that, go into details about that a bit later on. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a little clip. We've got a little clip uh, about uh, your, uh, your fashion show, your fashion show. We'll take a look at that and come back straight away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back up close and personal today with uh, Mrs. Uh, Varushka Patel live in the studio. We've just seen a little clip of a fashion show, Kanya uh, fashion show, Kanya events. Uh, and now we're going to talk about fashion. And I'm loving what you're wearing at the moment. Uh, is that part of your creation? So this is our traditional uh, African fabric called Ishwe Shwe. It's the weave of our land of Africa. And um, so the, the concept of Indo-African is of my birth, my ancestral birth land of India uh, and my time there that I was exposed to Indian raw silk, indigo um, and the opulent uh, silk and acknowledging uh, my birth land of Africa and our beautiful prints that are so significant to the people of our land. So the culture of what we are doing at uh, Kanya Designs is keeping cultural heritage alive from a story of fabrics. So what I'm wearing is traditionally shwe shwe. I've now made it into an Indian uh, blouse, sari blouse, and wearing it with a sari. So it looks Indian, but I'm so proud that I wear two cultures. You, you actually, yeah, when you see it up close, yeah, you actually you see, the, see the, the that prints, it's different. Uh, how beautiful and pretty, yeah, and yeah. delicate also, very yeah. delicate. And it's 100% cotton. And there you go. <laughs> and apparently a little bird told me you were going to bring a jacket for me today. Oh. I'm like, it got left back at, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm Fine. looking at your style and I thought it would have been wonderful to have you in one of our garments today. And it would have been an honor, but like, you know, for the next time, we'll <laughs> next do that. Time, next time, we'll... <laughs> Now we're going to talk a bit more about your your fashion, how you became a fashion designer. Uh, is it when you went to India or when you got back from India? So as a student, uh, my aunts and her best friends would travel. they beautiful, uh, successful, sophisticated woman. And I'd be this young stu student traveling with these beautiful ladies. And they were all into um, creating fabrics. So they owned um, 
dyeing factories and manufacturers and weaving uh, outlets of silk and indigo and block prints. And I would travel just to enjoy the time with them in Pondicherry and Kumbakonam and not realizing I was actually learning uh, this craft of art. I was just a dancer, but paying attention, uh, watching and smelling and, and feeling the textures of different fabrics. And imagine it's almost 20 years later that uh, when I, earlier when I came back to South Africa, I thought uh, it's so strange because I couldn't find fabrics that were 100% cotton and the beautiful robust colors of India. So I traveled down into our central Durban which is our market area. It's almost very similar to Port Louis market. So that's where I found beautiful African women selling the, the weave of our land. And I fell in love with it. And that years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, was the start of Kanya Designs because I started wearing uh, salvars and churidas and sari blouses and dresses all in African fabric. People loved my clothes and thought it was different. Um, the first opportunity for Kanya was I dressed one of the ministers. Or oh, I had an opportunity. So that would have been a great exposure for you. <laughs> that was the first one. And I had attended a meeting with her and the night before I said, oh, let me create something amazing. I cut up one of my own saris and attached a African shwe shwe to it and wore it as an African sari the next day. So she was blown away with that. And that was really the birth of Kanya. It was the visual experience of social cohesion. So you and your team, when you go uh, um, to buy your, your, uh, the material, so uh, do you have it specially made? Uh, do you have exclusive uh, rights for your um, bulk that you buy? So uh, for the past years, I've been buying um, from the local suppliers and I personally handpick and choose uh, our fabrics. And now with the registration of uh, Kanya in Mauritius, and part of SADC and part of the South African Chamber of Commerce, uh, also in Mauritius, we are now have access into fabrics coming in from West Africa and all over Africa, coming into Mauritius as well as uh, into South Africa. Now we have an opportunity to design our own prints and uh, we have a vision of creating organic fibers. So we have okay. a team that's researching how we can create the perfect fabric uh, for everyone that's wanting something authentic. So um, for us in Mauritius, are we able to, to, buy, uh, to buy your um, designs? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you can visit kanyadesigns.com. It's online. You can purchase it online. Uh, we are soon to be in the Oberoi Hotel. So you'd be able to see some of our beautiful exclusive garments in the Oberoi. And we will hopefully be having a store in Mauritius. But for now, it's just online. Excellent, excellent. That's good news for us anyway. But thank you uh, for your presence here today. It's just amazing talking to you. So I just go in your the story, everything that you're telling us is, is just so amazing. Uh, your um, uh, entertainment, your group is called Kanya Events. And uh, you recently launched uh, the group, uh, uh, which includes uh, South African uh, musician. And when you're Mauritius, of course, you include some Mauritian artists. <laughs> and now uh, it's time for a second performance. What do you say? Let's find... I think you'd be blown away with the musicians. They are a unique group with Kanya. We are con looking at when we look at authentic fibers and you know keeping the weave of our lands alive. We also wanting to keep ancestral music and dance and culture alive. So this collaboration is about uh, countries of indenture on the African continent. So it's sharing musicians from this uh, region that come together in phenomenal music. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Up Close and Personal, and of course, we're celebrating the amazing career of Mrs. Varish Kapate, and of course, the band, the Kanye band, right here, live in the studio for their second performance.
amazing musician, amazing music. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did uh, just then. We'll see them a bit later on. In the meantime, uh, Mrs. Patia is still with me in the studio and I'm very, very proud to have you. We're going to talk about uh, dance. You know, my career started as a dancer as well. And now I have this amazing Baron Natyam dancer. We'll talk about how this started. So I've been learning classical or traditional folk dancing from the age of four years old. Uh, when I was 13, I started to formally learn the art of Bharatnatyam. And at 17, I moved to India again. And then actually started this formal traditional um, training of grooming the mind, physically grooming the body of dancing eight, nine hours a day. Uh, 24 7 um, it's been an amazing journey um, I'm still learning I'm still exploring I'm still reading and writing um, and and feeling like uh, there's never enough time because we are always running out of time to just explore the art to its full capacity now you've done some amazing performances around the world. Uh, share your experience. How was it? Uh, you know, when you're dancing, you're there in your uh, costume, uh, with your beautiful jewelry, the lights on, the public is in front of you. So share your experience. So the gentleman was just asking me, are you nervous today? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, when I get on stage to dance, I'm super nervous. And the musicians were playing this weekend and I was standing on the side and I felt like, oh, that's like my dance performance because I have butterflies and I feel all very anxious. Um, it's a phenomenal experience. I've, I've danced as an entertainer for many years and in the last maybe uh, six to eight years, I've started dancing for the first time. All right. Uh, because my translation uh, became where I don't see and I don't hear thereafter. It's a very internal experience of uh, vibrational energy. Um, I'm deeply connected to people that are around me or the surroundings and I've danced in opulent stages, I've danced in courtyards, I've danced on rugged floor. Um, it's not the place, it's the presence that you are able to uh, almost reel in uh, to allow everybody to experience that moment. You've been able to share your dance experience with our Mauritian dancers here? Oh, many, many, and many musicians. Um, we shared a phenomenal experience just over these last three days. Uh, and last night as a dancer, I just could not sit still. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah, when you hear the music, <laughs> when the, the audience is there, the line, camera, everything is in front of you. It's a different world, it's a different experience uh, that sometimes you, you can't even express yourself. It's so, like, yeah. wow. No, it is wow. I think anyone getting onto stage with lights and sound and people. Um, so we work very hard in a rehearsal. We double up for 120%. Because once we get to stage, we take out about 40%, which, which goes to the sound. You're dependent on the sound guy, you're dependent on musicians and lights, and then it's actually dance. Now, you know what? We've done some research. I've got a little clip of you dancing, and I would like with your permission. I hope it's the best clip. <laughs> <laughs> to share this with all of you today. So, there's a clip of Mrs. Patia doing her Bharatnatyam dance. <laughs> Sada Shivam 
An exquisite performance that was Mrs. Pate doing a Bharat Natyam dance. Uh, uh, congratulations, it's just amazing. Thank I you. would like, I haven't had the opportunity to see you live. So next time I will be right in the front cheering for you. Abs absolutely. <laughs> now, you know, this, uh, this show is called Up Close and Personal. So this is where we get a bit uh, personal and funny though. Like I said, cheeky. Okay. Uh, cheeky meaning like we'll see, we'll find out a bit more what you like. Uh, and uh, what do you like best? My first question. What do you like best about Mauritius? Dal puri. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So. It, it. It would have been my, my answer as well. Dal oh, puri. okay, yeah. And uh, yes. I, no, I love, I love, um, I love just the authenticity of the people. You yeah. know, the the being being intimate with the people of, of the market area and things. I love just being close to people. It's amazing how, uh, before I asked you that question, you already had the answer. It was like, <laughs> <"Dab> <laughs> you didn't have to think about it. <laughs> now, now, who is your favorite, uh, you know, Bollywood uh, uh, is huge around the world now. Who is your favorite Bollywood actor? I would say uh, Amita Bachchan. The legend. Uh, the legend, uh, because it's not just he's not just an actor he's he's truly a legend that has shared life lessons life skills i love the intimacy of his work and um and just what we can take back from that that's that's a real man we seeing on on set his presence is his just presence like... is magnanimous yes. so i think for him um is definitely my my hero, I would say. <laughs> and of course, now we'll have to move to Best Actress. Who is your favorite actress? Um, now I can see there's a few when you're thinking a which few, one of you. <laughs> there's a few, there's a few, that especially Madhure Dixit, that because of a, she's a phenomenal dancer. So I've always followed her, so I, I would say her because of dance. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I know the answer for the next question. If you had to choose an actor to be your leading man in a movie, who would you choose? I would say Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Shah Rukh Khan. All right. Uh, if you if you could uh, if you had to choose if you had the opportunity of being part of a movie that's already been done, huh, Bollywood, which movie? Which is also my question for which is your favorite movie? I would say Devdas. Uh, yeah. It's a legend. Um, the storyline, the dance, the experience, the subservient woman and the coming out of uh, breaking free of, uh, you know, a tradition that that almost doesn't allow people to be free. So I would say Devdas. There you go. You've chosen like all the best ones so far, which is very good. <laughs> now, what are you like at home? Like your day off, your hobby? What do you do to relax? Uh, I feel privileged when I have a day off, but I love just being in my home. I have a beautiful home that has wonderful space and an amphitheater for dance and lots of music happening. I have beautiful children. So just a day at home. My kids are phenomenal cooks. I was going to say, son. do you have time to cook? <laughs> oh, I do all my cooking. I manage uh, my home. I, yeah. Do you have cheat days, takeaway days? Uh, no cheat days. <laughs> no My cheat kids days. don't okay. eat any takeaways. <laughs> so I no, I, I love just being home. Your favorite country in the world? India. India. And why? I think it's because um, I can deeply connect. Not because of the temples, it's the land. It's the, um, the land that uh, resonates with all of us. Yeah. If you could um, have coffee with somebody, chatting like we are, you've already, you can't say me. <laughs> <laughs> I, a, a personal he or somebody, an icon, who would you have coffee with to just a normal chat? I would say it would be my, my dear, uh, our honorable former president of our country, Nelson Mandela. I've loved him all my life as a child and he's taken us to where we are today and brought us, given us opportunities. Uh, he, was, he would be someone that I would do namaskaram. It's a tradition that we touch the elders' feet. I always wished for that as a child, but sitting down and having traditional kumba konam coffee would be with him. I would make it personally 
and treat him as uh, we call it Baba, which means uh, elder or grandfather. So it would be my one opportunity. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Well, there you go. It was not. It was not so hard. You were like no, getting worried when I no. said like it's the cheeky time <laughs> part of the show. That's nothing personal. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now it's time. It's time to to have some entertainment. The band live in the studio. They're here. They're amazing, as you saw. They're back for the third performance. You will enjoy this one. I always say, like, time flies when you're having fun. And I could sit for hours to talk to you about your experience and the way you're telling all, all this. You, you're making me traveling with you, which is a very, very good thing. So I thank you for this. Now, as you know, this part of the show now, this part of the interview is about your upcoming projects. I know you come to Mauritius very often. You're here. So what uh, I always like to get, like, you know, exclusivity. So what's coming up? I know you've got loads in your agenda. So, you know, there's people see me and there's actually two parts to me of being the artist and, you know, the designer for Kanya. So we're very excited for Kanya Designs. We've just recently registered in Mauritius. So we're hoping to share this lineage of um, fantastic 
garments and new designs. We uh, have a fashion show coming up, so people will get to know about that, just to share exclusive garments and the everyday casual clothes. You'll be able to have a lot of visual um, presence, see a lot of visual presence of Kanya. And in terms of art, we are looking at bigger collaborations now on the African continent. We are looking at Reunion, Mauritius, South Africa, Fiji. Uh, so everyone um, that are part of the indentured history. We are looking at a collaboration of musicians to come together, share this lineage of ancestral music within our continent, um, hopefully America, and definitely all the artists will be coming back to South Africa to perform. Yeah. So uh, a, a little musical with Mauritian, South African, Réunion Island, right here in Mauritius on a big stage with loads of dancers, loads of musicians. <laughs> it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. There you go. <laughs> now, you know, I, I have to say uh, hats to you for uh, you know embracing your cultures, uh, both African and your Indian culture. So it should be a huge example for everybody watching us, for the young people watching us, how amazing it is uh, uh, to bring out this talent and to use what uh, you know from your knowledge. Now also, um, just a last, uh, a last request, a nice message to everybody, all the young people getting uh, watching you tonight uh, and get feeling inspired. So what a good message can you pass on? I would say that um, it's just to remain authentic. I think I've been, um, I love my culture. I love my birth land and my ancestral land. And I've been very proud of this. So it's about being confident in what's right in front of you, what's present. I've embraced uh, what this amazing universe has given me and just always consciously thinking that I'd love to share it. So I would say that youngsters, um, I've never been a designer. I'm so grateful that it's dropped on my lap, but um, nothing is impossible. Absolutely. When you say, you think of the word impossible means I'm possible. So I am an example of being a traditional orthodox dance, a dancer that um, I could become something that I could share a glimpse of my African land with the entire world. So nothing's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. But also we must add a lot of work, a lot of passion and dedication to whatever field that you choose to pursue. You agree with me on that? Absolutely. You know, it's hard work. <laughs> I miss it's not so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the rehearsal, the, that part is okay. But uh, it's been a pleasure, it's been a privilege and honour to have you on the set of Up Close and Personal. As you know, NBC put up this show to celebrate international artists to come and share all their uh, dreams, all their passion with us. And uh, you've been the most amazing uh, guest today. So I thank you so much. Uh, and I'm looking forward to where your design next time we meet. Uh, you do, please come and visit us next time you're in Mauritius. Absolutely. And thank you so much. This has been such a comfortable, wonderful uh, time to just share and sit together. You know, in India, they have coffee with Karan. Here in Mauritius, <laughs> coffee with Jerry. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big, big thank you to you again. Thank you, To Jerry. your team for taking time to come and visit us at NBC. We've got another performance. Kenya, they're back.
had the most amazing, uh, pleasant time with uh, Mrs. Varushka Patea in the studio today. She's just an amazing person with lots, lots, lots of things coming up. So keep up. Uh, you can follow her on the page on Facebook. In the meantime, in the meantime, a huge thank you to our partners, Kors Mammut, Maison Sasha. Thank you very much for watching tonight. And of course, a big thank you to our musician, Vijay Siwalal, Manesh Ramjatan, Nishal Bojawan, and of course, Vadish Dussoy. Thank you very much. The whole team, the organizers uh, uh, that brought uh, Mrs. Patia to Mauritius. We thank you very much. In the meantime, like I always end up on my show by saying, take care, be good, always be good. We'll leave you with another last performance by Kenya. <laughs>